Obama for America. Sean Spicer is the communications director for the RNC. Sean, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Thanks for having me. Uh, a DNC spokesman says it's kind of an odd way for you to start your meeting by attacking them. He says your only real unifying message is that they really don't like us. What do you say to them? I think what we're talking about this week is a fundamental shift that we we had in our camp in our party after the last election, where we looked at the tactics and techniques that it takes to win, put a permanent ground game in place around the country. We have more staffers now that will live and breathe in each of the states, making relationships, building connections, and helping our candidates. And second is making our party completely centered on digital and technology advances that benefit the entire party. The difference, Chris, is this: what we are doing is a fundamental shift for a party. Party. We are building a party-centric uh, change here that will benefit everyone who's running from city council all the way up to the presidency. What, the, what OFA did was built a fantastic operation that was great for one candidate. It was sort of like one use only. And it has done so at the expense of the DNC. The DNC is $18 million in debt. All of the effort, all of the resources are going to continue the OFA effort, leaving the DNC for dead, which is going to put their 2016 nominee in a very, very difficult situation. Situation. Well, let's talk about your effort. You talked about uh, techniques and strategies. Uh, the autopsy that came back after the election by you folks showed, quote, public perception of the party is at record lows. Young voters are increasingly rolling their eyes at what the party represents, and many minorities wrongly think that Republicans do not like them or want them in the country. When someone rolls their eyes at us, they are not likely to open their ears to us. But what indication is there that you've made inroads, especially with minorities? Well, we have hired a tremendous amount of folks here at the RNC that, as I mentioned, what we're calling our engagement team. Uh, heavily in the black community, engaging, in, excuse me, the Asian community and the Hispanic community that are not living and working in D.C., but rather living and, and working in communities that, frankly, we have neglected in the past. Major urban areas, major pockets of Hispanic populations or Asian populations. They are building those relationships, talking to them about why they're a Republican, talking about Republican principles. And well, let me let me ask you about one of those particular pockets. Uh, in May, we saw the head of your minority outreach in Florida switch parties over what's going on with immigration. A lot of House members resistant to any kind of immigration reform. And, and you have Congressman Steve King saying immigrants have calves the size of cantaloupes because they're running drugs. Well, I, the, the situation in May was covered very well, which was the fact of the matter is the guy had sent emails up to a week ago asking for a job. When he didn't get a job, he made a public statement saying, I'm switching parties. Well, I mean, I think that more had to do with income than actually our party. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have made tremendous gains and started to put people out in the staff, building relationships that are going to benefit our entire party. I, is there, are there people in our party that sometimes go off script? Absolutely. We're not. That, 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 that's impossible. The DNC hasn't answered for Bob Filner, Anthony. Wiener, Elliot Spitzer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So at the end of the day, what our job is to, to enhance our party by creating the best tactics and, and techniques, field operation, engagement, contact, digital and technical operation that will benefit all of our candidates so that they can go out there and explain why a conservative social and fiscal agenda benefits uh, all Americans from the lowest levels of government to the presidency. Well, will you start perhaps by picking sides in some of your tougher primaries? For example, will you support Senator Mike Enzi in Wyoming over Lynn Cheney? The RNC has a rule. It's Rule 11. It's in our bylaws. It's online that prohibits the RNC from getting involved in primaries. That, that, but didn't so, you back Charlie Crist over Marco Rubio no, and David no, Dewhurst? No, actually we didn't. The NRSC did, the Wy senatorial committee. Wyoming leaders the, say they're, they're very concerned. And in fact, they put out a statement saying, uh, talking about that. Okay. The NRSC, which is the National Republican Senatorial Committee, has in the past gotten involved with elections. It changes from cycle to cycle. Their current policy, which has been the majority of their policy, is to be back incumbents. They're backing Senator uh, Enzi. Our party is largely at the campaign level, backs incumbents. The RNC has a rule that prohibits us from getting involved in primaries unless there is a vote of the three officials that, that from that state to, to grant a waiver. So okay, if that so let occurs, me just make sure I understand what you're saying, because the, the people from Wyoming have said they're going to come to this meeting where you are right now and they basically are going to say we want you to stay out of this but are since he is the incumbent will you back Senator Enzi 
Okay, I'm going to explain this to you again. Okay. There's a rule that says Rule 11, it's online, on the website, that's existed forever. It says the RNC cannot get involved in primaries unless the three members, the National Committee woman, the National Committee man, and the state chairman, all unanimously agree for a waiver. If that occurs, then yes, the RNC can get involved in the primary situation. Barring that, we are prohibited from doing that. So if the Wyoming uh, state chair says no, then you stay out of it. It's just that simple. If all three, any one of those three object, yes, then we, we stay out. However, as I pointed out, the Senatorial Committee and the National Republican Congressional Committee both can set their own policies as how they want to govern campaigns at their level. From an RNC standpoint, from a national party standpoint, we have to follow the rules that our grassroots vote on. We see, uh, you know, some, some split in the Republican Party, and I'm wondering what the sense of it is there, Sean. It seemed for a while like it was Tea Party versus the establishment. Uh, you know, members of your party leadership even, even talked about that. Now it seems like uh, the libertarian wing is almost breaking off and picking up steam, led by Rand Paul. How will you address that at this gathering? Well, I think we've got, uh, I mean, frankly, at the end of the day, this is a, a party that welcomes uh, all of those factions that you just mentioned. We are better and stronger and can only win when all of those people are together working as one for a common goal. You saw the effect that the Tea Party and the folks in the Liberty Movement had in 2010 with us being able to take back the House, and, and, and they are an important and increasingly vocal part of our party that is critical for us to, to keep an eye on and, and make sure that we're listening to them, because um, they, are, they are the folks that are out there knocking on the doors, sending, posting things on Facebook and sending things on Twitter. So there's room for everyone. This is not an either-or situation. Sean Spicer, Communications Director for the Republican National Committee. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank